morning gang today I thought I would do a quick knitting demonstration with the Wensleydale Gotland cross yarn that I made so these are the textured and yarns this was the one I was aiming for and I got it this was my first attempt but I'm gonna use both this is the leftovers of the chain plied with the colored with the dye yarn that I did and I'll use that in it as well this is glorious it's got a really nice sheen to it it's not ropey it's very squishy and soft and I'm going to use that too so let's reposition the camera and we're going to do some knitting with some textured yarns so I'm a continental knitter so you may have to adjust for um, what do they call it when it's not continental knitting? Picking or throwing, I'm a picker. I forever work on circular needles. I can't stand straight needles. They're too hard to hold. So I'm going to cast on, um, let me think, five stitches. I'm going to try to work in a triangular pattern. Now, I am a painfully slow knitter, so I will edit this heavily so you can see what's being done, but I am going to have some coffee. All right, so I'm starting off with just a regular yarn to make my base, which is this chain plied fleece. I'm going to slip the first stitch, increase, knit the second stitch, increase, Knit the center stitch, increase, knit, increase, knit. Now, because it's going to be textured anyways, I don't need a stockinette stitch. I can just go straight with the garter stitch. I believe I've named them correctly. So knit every row. So we did an increase row. Now we just do a straight knit row. So now we're going to do an increase row and I'm going to add markers because I'm getting stitch, lots of stitches on there now so I don't want to lose track. So we're going to slip the first, place a marker, yarn over, place a marker, knit, two, This is why we're placing markers, because I just had to really count that out. Increase. No, we want to increase, then place marker. Then knit our center stitch. Then place marker. Then increase, and knit across. Um, I'll have to go look at some more markers, but I'll do that in a minute. All right, so we've reached the end of our increase row. Now I'm going to have to knit across. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my first textured yarn. This is the one that doesn't have as much color in it. And I'm going to knit with this. stitch grab the correct yarn all right and now I'm going to knit across and this is why I used a larger needle than was called for with this yarn was so that when I got to the textured I can still knit it easily. So 
There's our first couple of rows and our first row with the textured. Now, if you want to keep your texture on the same side, <clears throat> you would need to purl a row. I'm just going to knit for now and we'll do purls later to show you what it looks like. But for now, we need to do an increase row. All right, so now we've gone back across with our textured. Now I could continue working in the textured, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to my original yarn. So I want to let that go down there. And I'm doing this all on the same edge so I don't have to uh, change yarns. I just draw it up along the edge and then I can clean that up later if I need to, but with the texture it probably won't even show. All right, so here's what we have so far. Let's have a look at the texture. It stays on this side, mostly. Or you can have less texture on this side and have all the fluffy bits next to the skin. Now we're going to do an increase row back across. So we're back to our first side. And I will go back across with my textured yarn. Now, if you're a crocheter who wants to learn knitting, I highly re recommend learning continental. The um, movements of your hands are very close to crochet as opposed to the other kind of knitting. Why can't I remember what they call the other kind? Anyways, maybe they just call it knitting. Now, when you get a big floof like this that can really jam up your stitches, you can just pull it forward a bit to make it more of a bobble. And that'll keep it from binding up your knitting. And give more texture on the surface of your project. So now we need to do an increase row. You can see how that texture is just poofing up on the surface. So when I pick up my stitch, when I pull it through, rather than just slide that right off the needle, I kind of give a little tug for some slack to let that texture really show itself and shine, especially since I'm using a smaller needle than I should for a textured yarn. You can see how when you're working back across, you start to get tangled in that. So giving this a pull will keep that from binding up. I'm going to do an increase, pass our marker, knit one, pass our marker, increase, and continue. So there's what we got so far. We're just doing an increase 
every other row. I'm going to straighten it and we can start to see the triangle shawl shape show, showing. And you can start to see how the texture is going to look in the finished project. And it feels so lovely to pet. All right, I'm going to change angles so you can maybe see better because it's very hard to film knitting unless it's attached to you. Hmm. Let's try a new piece of equipment. One second. In case you didn't know, I do all my filming with my camera. I have a Samsung Galaxy S10, I want to say. Anyways, it's got an amazing camera and I haven't seen the need to get a separate camera at a huge price when I have what I need right here. Well, one day while cruising Amazon, I found a chesty harness for your cell phone. I also have one for my head. But since we're trying knitting today, I'm going to try using this and we'll see if this gives us a better view of what's going on. So one sec, I'll pop you in the harness and we'll have a go. So I just knit a couple rows using the camera to see how it looks and it looked pretty decent. So I'm going to try filming like this. Now this is going to be a knit straight across with a textured row. I always put my increase row heading back towards where my two yarns join on this side. I'm not tying off every time I'm just pulling it up the side and you can see that you can't even tell that I've been just lifting the yarn it just meshes in with all that texture so this is going to be a straight knit across row with textured yarn I'm just going to pull that tight and loop it around my little finger for a moment just to keep that first loop from getting too loose now I have a little bobble of texture there, so I'm going to pull that forward to let the texture shine. Now, you can just knit with larger needles, but because your tension in your gauge is going to be constantly changing with the textured yarn, I have found that you get a better structure if you alternate your textured yarn with the regular yarn and then just pull your, your textured yarn looser. So your structure will come from the regular yarn and your texture will more or less sit on the surface rather than providing the structure that comes from the regular yarn. So I'll do two rows in regular yarn and two rows in textured yarn. But because this needle size is definitely too small for the textured, rather than switching needles every two rows, I just pull it forward. Like I have it on a bigger needle. And we just work our way across. Pull it forward. Pull forward. Slip marker. And stitch the last one. So we are going to be heading back towards our un currently unused yarn. So that means it's going to be an increase row. This is like a basic, basic, basic pattern. It's so simple. So knit, pass over your marker, increase. We're going to knit to the next marker. And when we're knitting with the textured, pull through, tug it forward to get some slack on it and keep your texture sitting on the surface.
Now, I don't have a whole lot of yardage of these two yarn, three yarns. So probably what I'll do is just make like a, a cowl or a neckerchief for whatever you want to call it. So I increased before I slipped that stitch. So let me knit that, slip marker, increase, and then we keep going. So now we're back to the side where our two yarns join. And you can see that you can't even see that I've just been running it up the side. It just blends into the texture of the yarn. So we will be switching from our textured yarn to our chain plied regular yarn. Sometimes you kind of have to dig around in all that texture to find where the loop is but it'll become fairly obvious fairly quickly. All right, so here's where we're at. You can see it's starting to form into that triangle shawl shape with increasing every other row. You can see there's plenty of texture on there. The curly cues and gorgeous awesomeness and it's so soft to the touch. So I'm going to keep working for a while and then I will start on this one, which was my goal yarn, and we'll see how that looks. I'm almost through this one, but you really can't see the strand of color that's in it. So I'm hoping that this one, the color will show up in the background. All right, so here is our shawl so far knit with the textured yarn. It's actually, it's really soft and squishy. But you can see here the color in the yarn and I actually really like that effect. So if I'm using white locks, I would use that strand of color to bring a little bit of life into the project. So I cast off because, you know, uh, this was a couple of days ago when I was working on this. So what I'm going to do today is I am going to pick up stitches with the plain white yarn. This is another hand spun, I don't know, it's a medium grade, I would say. I have no idea what I spun it from because I didn't label it, but it's a nice squishy yarn. It'll make a good base. And I'm going to switch to using my tail spun yarn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ball up this yarn and as I do I will pull these locks loose and let them wind around the ball so it'll make it easier for when I knit. There we go. And then I'll just let them all wrap around the ball. So I am going to ball up this yarn, ball up this yarn so I'm ready to go and I will be back and show you how to knit with your extreme tail spun. I have cast on with my new yarn. I have my tail spun in a ball, which I'm telling you, I could just sit and squish this. It's so fuzzy. I upgraded my needle size from a 10 and a half to a 15. That's US. So this would be a, what, 10 millimeter. And I'm going to keep working. So this will be an increase row and then I will join on my tail spun. We are across with our regular yarn so now we're going to join our tail spun and we're going to start to add these tails. So what I'm going to do is I do have this leader. I'm going to allow it to be the first stitch Stitch that on, and we'll grab both of these. Working around that finger to hold some tension on. And start working my way across. So, here I have a tail. I'm going to stitch it. But now the tail is going to get caught in that twist. So I'm going to pull it through 
I'm going to make the stitch a bit bigger so that tail can come forward like that. Then I will stitch on the other side of that tail and you can see, well, other than being gummed up here. So then we have another lock right here. We want that to come forward. So we'll pull that forward and then we will knit on the other side of it. And that brings it to the front. So they will hang down. Here's another one. Pull that forward. Now if we stitch with our regular tension, we're going to catch the base of that lock and we're going to muck it up. So we're going to tug it over and work behind it and let it hang. Now this is why every second row I use a regular yarn to maintain my gauge and tension because I am going to keep working around the locks and that may make for tight or very loose stitches depending on where the lock appears. forward pull that forward and we're going to just keep working our way across so I will be back when I have the row finished and we're ready to turn we're getting to the end of the row and I can see that my next stitch is going to land between two locks and it will end up pulling them to the back so I will pull both locks through and see how I pulled them forward and then I will stitch behind them and then that leaves the locks at the front Next one, I will pull that one through and it should work out all right if I pull it tight and stitch behind it. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making decisions based on each lock as it comes up on whether I should pull through one lock, two locks, three locks, whatever it takes. So you can see these two locks are very close together and I won't be able to get a clean stitch between them. And it looks like I might have a third one there. No, I think I can get between this one and this one. So we will pull these two locks through between the needles, pull them forward so we can see we're pulling the actual yarn forward off to the side so that we can then stitch behind that tail then we have this lock we will pull it forward and we will stitch whoops stitch behind the tail next one pull it forward make a judgment call we've got lots there so we'll stitch behind the tail Next one, we pull it forward and we see the other next lock is also very close. So we will pull that one forward too. Fall down till we see yarn, stitch behind the tail. Let me see if maybe if I tip this up a bit, if you can see it better. So we come to our next lock we pull it forward, stitch behind the tail. Here's our next lock it forward but we can see there's another lock right here that's very close so we'll pull the two forward hold them there and 
you can stitch behind the tails. So now we're going to go back with an increase row. You can also see that by doing every second row in tail spun, you get a lot of tails in each row. If you just stitched it all in that, you would have an amazingly plush shawl, but I don't want it quite that plush. So I will go back in my tail spun and then I will switch back to regular yarn for a couple of rows. That will also help make your tail spun go further. Now, this is going to be an increase row. I'm going to slip the first stitch. If I can get my needle in here. There we go. I'm going to slip the first stitch. Now, because of how I did the last row, I want my tails to be on this side. So we want to increase. We'll make sure that we just have yarn for the increase. Tuck our tail over. Stitch behind it. Grab our lock. Stitch behind it. Grab our lock. Stitch behind it. Grab our lock. Stitch behind it and then just work your way across. Now, immediately you can see how much less fidgety this is when we're not pulling the locks forward. So next time, when we're trying to get our locks to hang on the face of the fabric, so the side facing us, we would change to a purl row and then that would put the locks on the side facing us. Let me do a couple more stitches and then I'll turn it and demonstrate. So when the locks want to hang on the side away from us, we do a knit row. And that makes it very easy to control those locks. And just stitch between them, grab the next one. Stitch between them. Grab the next one. Stitch between them. Grab the next one. I think on this one we're going to go two. So we'll grab both locks. And stitch between them. Now, let's turn. We want our locks hanging on the side of the project facing us so that all the locks hang on the same side. To make this easier, we're going to purl across. So we'll pull our lock down, purl behind it. Pull our lock down, and purl behind it. So this way, by purling on when the locks are facing you, you don't have to pull those locks between the needles. They're already hanging in the right position. And with a little bit of prep, just bring your yarn forward, smooth out all your locks. You can get a lot smoother with your knitting. Now, another reason to do a couple of rows of regular yarn 
is because this takes time. As with all things extreme tailspun, it takes time. So if you want to decrease the amount of time you're spending on it, then definitely alternate with rows of regular yarn. So that is how I knit with my lock spun yarn. They all hang down from the fabric, from the knit fabric, and they make this fabulous curly cape. Now I'm almost thinking I would go across and back and cast off and just have it as a short little cape with all these beautiful, beautiful locks hanging off the edge. I think I'll do that. All right, I will be back when I have finished it and uh, we'll finalize our video. Back in a bit. Well guys, here it is. All done. Now, I still have to weave in my ends, but they're not terribly noticeable in amongst all the uh, blocks. So this would make a great little cowl, and it just has this lovely fringe. That would also look great on the bottom of a sweater or a top. Oh, we could do like a little, that could be fun. But that's one way to work with uh, textured yarn and tailspun yarn to maximize the beauty of the yarn itself. I'm very pleased with this. I think it turned out quite nice. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for joining me. If you like this, do the stuff down below because I do stuff like this all the time. I appreciate you all and have a great day.